All right, here, everybody. Today I have what I promised y'all last week. I was going to update y'all on the NFL rosters and let you know where everybody has landed, including some practice squad guys. Uh, some guys are still looking for rosters. Cade Brewer, uh, tight end. Malcolm Brown, running back. Malcolm Brown, the uh, defensive tackle. There's no L in between the O and the M. And then you also have Cameron Dicker, the punter kicker. We'd love to have him back, but he's still looking for another team. So hope those guys can find a spot to land on, especially as, unfortunately, as injuries happen throughout the season, these guys are going to be needed. Step up. And if you like the video, hit the like button. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you like this content. And comment below on who you're most excited to see Sunday. Uh, most of these guys are going to be playing in the 12 p.m. time slot and the 3.25 p.m. time slot. But we do have quite a few horns playing on the Monday game between the Broncos and the Seahawks. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So first up, you have the Arizona Cardinals. Colt McCoy, quarterback, second string. He's been a career backup, one of the best jobs you can have in, call, in not college football, in professional football, but as well as life. Getting paid a lot of money, not really any huge expectations. Now, I'm just really happy to see that guy doing well, especially with everything that's happened to him. Really cool to see, as well as Keonta Ingram making the roster, even as a four-string running back. That's nothing to scoff at. I mean, making the 53-man roster on NFL team, that's a that's some serious stuff right there. I'm moving over to the Bengals. You have Joseph Osai, defensive end, second string. Last year, before breaking his forearm, he I think, no, his wrist. Breaking his wrist, I think. And he was going up against one of the top tackles, young tackles in the NFL. And he was bullying him last year. So, really excited to see Joseph Osai play as a defensive end. <clears throat> uh, he's going to have to kind of prove himself. But I think that's a guy who can. Probably we could end up seeing him as his first string at the end of the year. Uh, Broncos, moving on. Andrew Beck at the fullback position. That position is not dead yet. First string. He will be used, and he was used a little bit here and there, you know, like once or twice in the offseason, or I mean the uh, preseason, but we'll see how he gets used. He's mainly a blocking guy, but he's a very integral piece to their offense. Then you got Calvin Anderson, offensive tackle, left tackle specifically, second string. So with a right-handed quarterback, Russell Wilson, that's one of your most important backup positions on the football team. Former buddy of mine, Calvin Anderson, love to see him do. I'm very happy to see all the success that he's having on the field and also in life. He's getting, he's just a really good businessman, former Rice guy. Love seeing, love seeing him do succeed in life. Really, awesome. PJ Locke, safety, second string, as well as Caden Stern, second string safety. So basically, the second string safety core for the Denver Broncos is a former Texas Longhorn safety core. I think that's kind of cool. And you have Shane Bouchelle for the Chiefs over there. Quarterback, third string. Then you have also a, for the Colts, Sam Ellinger, QB, third string. Now, both of these guys did very well in the preseason. Well enough to earn themselves a right on the roster. But Sam Ellinger, he was a guy that they brought in Nick Foles, and it looked like Sam Ellinger may be on his way out the door of the NFL, or at least headed to another uh, to a practice. You know, just but starting the journeyman career, and journeyman as a backup, which is probably not the way that you want to go. But he played his butt off this year. One of the stars in the preseason. He was nearly perfect. Sam Ellinger did a heck of a job played himself into having a job on this roster and as well as possibly even a future with the franchise as a quarterback. We'll see how that goes. Uh, Sam Cosme, offensive tackle, first string. He's getting some he's looking like he's gonna be the first string guy out there. He's on the unofficial first string depth chart. That should be fun to see how he does in the NFL. 
the Cowboys. Malik Jefferson has made the practice squad over there, linebacker. We'll see if he gets a shot this year. That's a guy that we've been really rooting for. And, I mean, similarly to some of these other guys, but not as long, he just kind of keeps on sticking around, you know. He's like a he's like a nagging injury. He just won't go away. Uh, going over to the, to the Dolphins now, you have Brandon Jones, strong safety, first string. Connor Williams for the he's playing the center position. I honestly, I I, I just I <clears throat> I hadn't been paying that much attention to it. Just hadn't really paid that much attention to the Dolphins in the preseason. And I was assuming he'd be playing a guard. Nope, center. Kind of cool to see. And here's the here was big deal of the month or of the year or of the video, whatever you want to call it. To Quan Graham for the Atlanta Falcons defensive tackle, first string. <laughs> Love to see it. Love to see it. Like a former what? It's not too. It's not not every day that you see a round five pick become a first string guy and within a few years that's really cool love to see him doing as well now here's for the set follow that up with the sad news of the camp out of the new york giants colin johnson who was i mean he was a guy that started out with the jags looked okay you know and then kind of went around ended up with the giants last year and then he kind of it looked like he might be on his way either to being just kind of a pure depth wide receiver, or even on his way out entirely of the NFL. And when they had guys that weren't playing well, he stepped up this preseason. And when they gave him more opportunity, he kept stepping up. And he kept doing it, and he was looking really good, like a first-string wide receiver. Not only that, but a good one. And then he has an Achilles tear. I mean, just... Now, if there is anything that's positive, heck, the Giants, they just brought back uh, Sterling Shepard, former OU wide receiver, who had an Achilles tear. So, it's not the same death sentence that it once was, but likely out for the year, likely won't see the field for a year, but he did well enough. They kept him on the roster, injured reserve. They didn't just release him. So, rooting for Colin Johnson in the future. Uh, best of luck, man. And then uh, Marcus Johnson, have the wide receiver, practice squad. Uh, he, more than any of these other guys, he is the nagging injury reference. <laughs> this guy does not go away. And I want to see him get on the roster and do good. Uh, do well, I should say. But this guy, he's got a ton of speed. I mean, I'm I'm just I'm a big fan. That you don't you don't stick around in the NFL this long, just practice squad to practice squad, chance after chance. He had his he he was gonna he was looking like he was gonna start last year, and then he just had an injury early on in the season with the Titans. <clears throat> Want to see him get his chance again, Marcus Johnson. Hope you succeed, sir. Josh Thompson out of the Jaguars. Now this one looked I it was it was Is he on the practice squad? Is he on the did he make the roster? What, what, what? He's on the practice squad. But special teams guy, he almost almost made it due to special teams only. Now Josh Thompson, I you could see a scenario where if he's a fringe guy that almost made the roster Hey, maybe he's a candidate for make, for getting on the roster pretty soon. Tariq Black, wide receiver, New York Jets. <clears throat> this guy was looking pretty good up until he had a concussion. And then he just didn't show up anymore in the preseason. So, you kind of got to wonder if there's if they have any sort of lackluster, la- lackluster production out of their wide receivers, the New York Jets. Does he get a bump up? I hope so. Tariq Black, he's been... I mean, we didn't get him long, but I I still have been a fan of this guy. Deshaun Elliott at the New York... At the New York... The Detroit Lions. Strong safety, first string. 
he was out there popping people, you know, with the with the Aggie MCDC. I think that's a despite the college that MCDC went to. Great pairing for Deshaun Elliott. I mean that's that that's a great guy for him to be playing for. Really excited to see how Deshaun does this year. This is this is kind of a uh, a prove it year for him. Charles Amenahue, defensive end, second string. Hassan Ridgeway, defensive tackle, second string. So right there, you kind of they didn't play at the same time, but you got a little bit of a Longhorn defensive line going there over there for the uh, San Francisco 49ers. Moving over to the Panthers, you have Deontay Foreman, Colin Johnson. Another reason why he's not dead yet. Achille, former Achilles injury, Achilles tear. He looked, dare I say, pretty good backing up Derrick Henry last year. And he had some serious run. Love to see this guy's uh, NFL career get revived. Want to see him do well. Hopefully he can uh, spell some injury uh, concern for Christian McCaffrey by taking away some touches, some of those hard touches. Moving over to the New England Patriots. Adrian Phillips, free safety, first string. Guy, I mean, Belichick loves that dude. And then another guy that Brad Belichick seems to love, Brendan, Sco- Brendan Schooler, fourth string. Now, four string safety, but the reason why he's on the team is because of special teams. Special teams. If you can't make it anywhere else, make it there. Still getting paid. Little Jordan Humphrey, wide receiver on the practice squad. He was looking pretty good in the preseason. Uh, I'd like, I would really love to see him get a shot. Uh, Justin Tucker, kicker, goat for the Ravens. Do I need to say anything more? No, I don't. Devin Duvernay. That's my guy. Really excited to see this here for him. This guy should have a solid increase in his role this year. Wide receiver, first string. Marquise Brown is now gone. They're looking for some production to fill. Duvernay's your guy. Please, 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 Greg Roman. Use him correctly. Oh, if he does, I, I mean, I a little, little tangent on my fantasy football stuff here, but if Devin Duvernay does well this year, I'm making me some money on fantasy football. Uh, Malcolm Roach for the New Orleans Saints, defensive tackle. He played in all three of the games this year for the preseason, and then... <clears throat> He got placed on the injured reserve pretty early on, I think either the first day or the second day. So, no one kind of knows really what that's about, but he's going to have to miss either the first four or five games. So, but on the roster. Shout out Malcolm Roach. The University of Texas Seahawks, you have Quandre Diggs at the free safety position, first string. Puna Ford, fan favorite. First string defensive tackle. Michael Dixon, first string punter. Goat. Marquise Goodwin, another guy, like a nagging injury. Won't go away. Wide receiver, second string. Now Marquise Goodwin, he's, I mean, just similar to Marcus Johnson last year, but this is just so many times more, like just it's happened time and time and time and time and time again for Marquise Goodwin. He gets a shot. He's doing well. Injury. Or he, he looks like he's going to have a legit shot to do well. Injury. It's happened like three or four years in a row for him. I'm really, really rooting for him this year. Marquise Goodwin, hope you do well. He also has a YouTube channel. Go ahead and go over there and subscribe to that. Uh, Jeff Swaim, tight end, second string. Blocking tight end. I mean, this guy... He's just, he's one of these NFL vets that's just a crucial piece to your offense. He's not like, and when I mean crucial piece, I mean, he may not be, you know, the top five, top, even top 10 most important, 
but he's something that you want because if anything, if at the very least what you're getting is you're getting that vet guy in the locker room that guys can kind of almost look to, look to and go, that's how I do business here. That's how we get stuff done. And then to end it off, you have the Minnesota Vikings, Jordan Hicks. Hopefully he can have a bounce back year. Linebacker, first string. He had a little bit of time at uh, Arizona. But really wanted to see him get back to being the the you know the really good linebacker that he once was. Uh, and what I mean by that is like the, just being a top performing linebacker in the NFL. That would be pretty cool. And then Chris Boyd, cornerback, third string. Again, to, to stay on a roster that long, I know a lot of people like to give Chris Boyd crap for uh, various – you know, things, but hey, man, it it's, it takes some talent to stay on the roster that long. So give the man credit where it's credit's due. All right. I appreciate you all for tuning in. Now, like I said, most of these games are going to be played at 12 on Sunday, some 3 o'clock on Sunday, but we do have a lot of Longhorns playing on, on Monday. That Monday night football. All right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you all enjoyed this. I hope this informed was informative more than anything else. And let's cheer on our Longhorns. I will have NFL every play videos the day after their uh, the day after the Monday games. All right, everybody. Y'all have a great day. Hook 'em.